my most amazing and awesome artists. Today we're going to be using earthenware clay that comes from the ground to create our very own pinch pot creatures. Now these creatures can be whatever you want. They can be animals, real, imaginary, could be an alien, could be a turtle, a pig, whatever you could possibly imagine, as long as it starts out with the same base shape of a pinch pot. Notice you'll be able to store things inside of there. So to make a pinch pot, I start out with my clay by taking a pinch off. That pinch off that I'm taking is going to be for the details later on, like the head, the paws, whatever it is that I'm making. With my larger piece of clay, I'm going to roll a sphere. What I'm doing right now is wedging the clay so that it gets into a nice shape that I can roll. Now I'm using both of my hands, not on my table, but in the air, to roll my clay into that sphere. When I'm rolling it, I'm keeping one hand on the top or bottom flat at all times. That will make it a perfect sphere. Now I'm diving my thumb on into the middle of my sphere, making a hole. Not all the way through, though. Then I take my baby gator, or I could call it my baby shark, and I'm going to chomp, open, turn, chomp, open, turn, until it's as thick as my pinky. If you chomp too much and it's too thin, like I'm about to show you, then it will break. You don't want it to be thinner than your pinky, but you don't have to start over. You can just smooth out that wall and press it down to make it a little bit thicker. So you do not have to start all over. You just need to make sure that that wall ends up as thick as your pinky. If you need to, you can take a little bit of water on your finger to smooth out any cracks. So once you pinch open and turn and you now have a bowl, you can smooth out any cracks on the edges with just a little bit of water. If I were to cover my entire piece with water and worry about every single little crack though, then my piece would turn back to mud and it would get harder to work with. So now that I'm done making my pinch pot, I'm going to use that extra clay that I put aside earlier to make the details like the head and maybe the eyes or my paw or legs, whatever it is. So I am rolling a sphere, then I made a pancake or a slab by flattening it out, and now I'm rolling a coil. You might know this as a clay snake. If you can create a sphere or a clay ball, if you can create a pancake or a clay slab, and if you can create a coil or a clay snake, then you can make anything that you add to your pinch pot. So I just made a sphere for the head and flattened it out just a little bit. All details that you add have to be as thick as your pinky. If they're any thinner, they are going to fall off or possibly break when these go in the kiln to get baked. So I'm going to shape my head into, I think I'm gonna make a cat to start out with. I'm pinching those ears up from my main circle shape. This is going to be way easier to pinch my ears up and sculpt them out of my larger piece of clay than if I were to add them on from another smaller piece of clay. So now I'm going to do something called scratch and attach. If I were to just stick that head on there, it might stick now, but it would definitely fall off later when it dried. So I have to create a clay Velcro. Velcro, like on shoes, has texture on both sides. I have to create texture on both of the sides of things that I want to glue together. Then I use a little bit of that nasty water that's just clay and water together to make a clay glue. I dip my toothbrush in it, I scratch, and then I attach. It's called scratch and attach because that's all you need to do to stick it. Then I smush and smooth. I don't really want to see any cracks from where I attached, so I'm going to smush it down and smooth it out, making sure I run my finger along the lines of where I glued. That way it's really attached. Always do the wiggle test. If it wiggles now, it's definitely going to fall off later. So I'm going to scratch and attach my spheres for my paws. Now my cat is going to be belly up. It's laying on its back. If you want to create an animal that's up on all fours, standing up or walking, you can do that too. These pinch pots could be used to store something. So I would suggest still holding the bowl so that it's open and you could put things in it, but you can decide if it's laying down with its belly up, if it's an animal, or it could be standing on all fours. I will show you how to create both. Right now, I'm making all of the paws, scratching and attaching, smushing and smoothing, making sure I do the wiggle test. If it doesn't pass the wiggle test, it's not attached good enough. Want to add something like a tail, I can do that by creating a coil. Now the only thing with the tail is that it has to be close to the body of your creature. It cannot be sticking far off because then it will break off if it doesn't get supported. So I need to have everything that is attached holding really close to the pinch pot. So if I make a tail, maybe I'm gonna curve it in and attach it in two spots, not just one. If something is sticking up, that's okay, but it has to be 
close to the body of your creature or your pinch pot. You can make anything you want as long as it's not sticking too far out. That would mean it would probably break off in the kiln. Now, now that I'm done with my little kitty, I'm gonna show you how you can make a creature that's on all four legs. When you're finished though, you're going to find your name in a box and place your pinch pot creature on top of it. Then you can clean up your area using your art wipes or you can go use the sink to wash your hands. Just make sure that you clean up all your trash, throw away any art wipes and return your toothbrushes to that nasty water bowl. You are going to put all your wooden tools back in the box, everything that we usually do to clean up. Let me show you how to make an animal on all fours though. Now this time I want you to do it with me. I'm gonna throw you an imaginary ball of clay and you are going to catch it, so get ready. All right, so if you caught that imaginary ball of clay, the first thing you do is peel a pinch off and save it for later. Then take your larger piece of clay and roll it into a sphere. This is lightning speed. See if you can keep up, roll your sphere. After you roll your sphere, you're going to take your thumb and you're gonna dive it on down and it is a hole. It doesn't go all the way through though. Then take your baby gator or baby shark and chomp, open, turn, chomp, open, turn, chomp, open, turn until you're all the way around, but don't go around twice because you wanna keep it as thick as your pinky. So make sure you do the pinky test. If you pass the pinky test, you can smooth out the cracks with just a little bit of water or just your finger would work too. Smooth out any cracks and then you're good to make your details. If you can make a coil or a clay snake, if you can make a clay ball or a sphere, and if you can make a clay pancake, you can make anything. So this time I'm going to show you how you can make an animal standing on a, up on its legs. So this time my head is going to go on the outside. It wouldn't make sense to put the head on the inside if it's not laying on its back. So I'm going to put my head on the outside of my pinch pot and then I'm going to make the feet. But don't forget if you don't scratch and attach it's going to fall right off. So I have to take my toothbrush and give it some texture on both sides. The thing I'm gluing and where I want to glue it to. So I scratch both sides creating a clay velcro and then smush and smooth them together so that it stays on. I'm kind of turning it until it screws into place and once it's going to pass the wiggle test and it stays on then I'm good to add other details like maybe I'll add some ears. Now this this time I am making a bunny. So I want to make some ears that are a little bit longer, but they still have to pass the pinky test. So I'm rolling two coils that are as thick as my pinky to put on top of the head to make some bunny ears. So I rolled four spheres to make my legs on the bottom of my pinch pot. So before I created the ears, I turn it over and then I scratch and attach the four spheres to make the four legs. Now these legs can't be too tall and skinny because then it won't stand up. It won't be supported by my large pinch pot. So I make sure that I scratch, attach, smooth, and smush. The legs should not be too big, otherwise it won't stand up. Then I'm gonna work on the ears. I can do that same thing, scratching and attaching, smoothing and smushing for my bunny ears. After the ears are all on and everything passes the wiggle test, then I can move on to details. You have a lot of pottery tools in your bin that you can use to carve into your ceramic piece once you are finished building the base. When I'm done and everything's smoothed out, that's when I can use my pointy tool to draw into it. When I'm drawing, I'm pressing lightly on the surface, not making a hole. I'm going to carve in maybe the details of my ears, maybe my face to it. So you can make a creature's face or you can make it 3D. So if I really wanted to, I could roll the eyes and scratch and attach them. Same for the nose and mouth. But instead of taking all that extra time, I've already made enough 3D pieces, so I'm just going to etch it right in. If I wanted to make texture using one of the texture wood tools in my bin that kind of looks like a fork I could do that too to make fur don't forget when you're all done do the wiggle test make sure it passes and when you're finished you're gonna put it in the box on top of your name make sure you've carved in all your details and use your time wisely because you do have to finish these today so think about your idea what kind of creature or animal you're going to create real or imaginary and come up with your plan Anything you make has to start with a pinch pot, so don't forget, we're going to start out by all making a pinch pot, and then you can make it your very own. You will be able to take these home if you come to our art show. You'll be able to take them home from the art show. If you can't come, you'll get them home the following week of school. All right, awesome artists, I cannot wait to see what you create today. Have a great time.